Hello everyone. I am Dr. Nawaz Adar and you are watching scardia.com. Today our topic is calcanean and metatarsal fractures. We will be discussing first and foremost the fractures of the heel bone that is the fractures of the calcaneum. Then we will be coming on to discussing the metatarsal injuries. As you know the foot is made up of multiple bones. There are phalanges which are present right in front which are called as toes as well. Then there are metatarsals. Then there are tarsal bones which include like naviculum. There are medial, middle and lateral cuneiforms. You have cuboid and then you have a talus which is actually articulates with the heel bone called as calcaneum. We will be discussing briefly the injuries of the cuboid, calcaneum and the, all the cuneiforms. Then comes the tarso metatarsal injuries. There is an articulation actually there is a Lisfranc frank joint which is actually found between the second as well as the medial cuneiform which is connected via Lisfranc frank ligament. Tarso metatarsal articulation is highly important because there is a forefoot which is formed by the metatarsal and the phalanges then there is a midfoot which is formed by the tarsal bones. Tarsal metatarsal uh, articulation is actually it connects the forefoot with the midfoot and which, which is very important this articulation is very important in terms of when we are walking and for the propulsion mechanism of the foot to take place. We will be briefly discussing the Lisfranc frank ligament injuries as well as the Lisfranc frank fractures as well and fracture dislocation when we will be coming through the tarso metatarsal injuries. Then moving on to the forefoot as we have started from the hind foot discussing calcaneum, talus and going on towards the forefoot that is we were discussing briefly the fractures of the metatarsal uh, which are five in number in our foot which may include the base fractures which may include the fractures of the shaft which could be include the crush injuries which may occur due to the trauma or a fall of very heavy objects on the foot or this could be the avulsion fractures because there are a lot of tendons which are attached to these metatarsals this could be associated with the avulsion fractures as well. Then we will be discussing the very important one that is the fractures of the fifth metatarsal base. Why it is important? Because it is more commonly involved with two types of injuries. One is there is high propensity of fractures due to more actually weight is transferred on the lateral uh, arches especially when we are uh, weight bearing on our foot. Then can this can lead to injury. Secondly, what is more important is that this metaphysial uh, junction actually has a high propensity of going into a non-union. So this needs a bit of a special intention because you need to treat these fractures very aggressively. Otherwise, usually patient comes and complains of non-union and patient is always in agony and pain and unable to bear weight properly and walk properly because of the non-union or a problematic fifth metatarsal. Then the stress fractures. The most common area of getting a stress fracture is actually the fifth metatarsal base although it can occur in other areas like in second metatarsal, in tibia, even in the an ankle area but that is probably the most common area and especially in the case of uh, athletes or in case of the uh, soldiers who are performing marches daily they have very high chances of having a stress fracture of the fifth metatarsal base. Then we will be going on to the stress injury we will be discussing along with the fifth metatarsal fractures and after all then lastly we will be discussing the metatarsophalangeal joint injuries although rare but yes there are a lot of injuries which can occur because the metatarsophalangeal joint is our, there is a, uh, on the plantar side where there is a plate called as plantar plate on extensor side there are actually tendons going through which is a form of extensor digitor uh, then uh, extensor hallucis longus extensor digitorum and all these tendons and then you have on the plantar side you have flexor tendons which are going through and they are actually attaching on these areas so there is a lot of chances that you have actually tendinous injuries or ligamentous injuries associated with MPT MTP joint problems. Lastly we will be discussing the phalangeal fractures or fracturing of the toes although the uh, problems with them are very rare and they usually can be managed conservatively but they can be highly painful because usually uh, whenever we are weight bearing during the push off phase the weight actually of the body is mainly on the toes and if there is a toe fracture the patient will be having a lot of problem when the patient would be walking so usually they need to be treated accordingly and uh, so that the patient can have uh, can regain mobility after the fracture. 
Lastly, we will be coming up to the fractures of the sesamoid. Fracture sesamoid, as you know, these are the two bones which are actually present in the flexor hallucis longus tendon in its medial and the lateral head. Usually intra uh, tendinous, uh, this, that's why they are called a sesamoid bone. Usually there is rarely fractured, but once they do get fractured, what we need to remember is we need to be on a lookout for this because patient may be having uh, hallux pain, patient may be having a problem with the great toe head uh, metatarsal pain, that is where it can be resulting in a problem and patient may be uh, complaining of wage pain, especially when he or she actually starts to walk. And on the x-ray, the sesamoid bones actually appear behind the blood metatarsal, so they need to be looked out very clearly that is there a fracture of sesamoid or not. And we may, if, we, if there is suspicion, we may have to go for some form of a CT scan so that we be absolutely sure whether we have sesamoid fracture or not. For further videos and more videos related to orthopedics, keep watching skade.com. Thank you very much.